Good day, friends. In continuation with our quadratic equation series one, there is this particular question that we need to solve using the same method of completing the square. So without wasting time, let us see how we can still resolve once again another quadratic equation using completing the square method. Okay. Um, the subject still remains uh, mathematics. Mathematics. That's the subject, mathematics. And the topic is just a quadratic equation. Quadratic equation. Okay. So that is the topic we are going to once again consider using the method of completing the square as we have been doing all this work. So the method we are going to use is uh, completing the square method, which is method one. Completing the square method. Completing the square method. Okay. That's the method we are going to use to resolve this um, equation, quadratic equation. All this while we've been using this method. So I want us to be very, very familiar with it. We can use it to solve any quadratic equation with ease. Okay. So the question is uh, have been solved in series. So this is question number question number five, which is three x squared minus uh, seven x minus five all equal to zero. Okay? That's the question. 3x squared minus 7x minus 5 all equals to 0. Now, we are going to solve this using stepwise approach of a method of a completing the square or completing the square method. Okay, so solution to this question is very simple. We consider the question first of all. It is a 3x squared minus 7x minus 5 all equal to 0. So step 1 here, step 1 solution is take the constant term to the right hand side. Okay, we have 3x squared minus 7x minus 5 plus 5 all equals to 0 plus 5. Okay? So that is it. What happens here is something we are familiar with. For us to be able to remove minus 5 from the left hand side and uh, introduce it to the right hand side, we need to uh, introduce um, positive 5, that is plus 5, that will cancel minus 5. So minus plus we nullify each other and then we have it at the right hand side. And the final thing becomes uh, 3 x squared minus 7x all equals to 5. So, this is the last point of the instruction as on step 1. So, step 2. Step 2. Step 2. What we are going to do in step 2 is to build on this. We are going to build on this to get the final or resolution of the instruction on step 2. So, step two, first of all, we put down the original question, which is x squared minus 7x, all equal to 5. The instruction on step two says that uh, the coefficient of x squared should be divided through, okay? Each of the terms of the equation should be divided by the coefficient of x squared. And that is what we're going to do right here, which is uh, 3 x squared all over 3 minus 7 x all over 3 equals 5 all over 3. Look at this. Numerator and denominator, the same. They will cancel out. They will cancel each other and we are left with us x squared minus 7 x equals to 5 all over 3. So, this is, this expression 
is the final resolution of the instruction on step uh, two. Okay? Then we're going to build on this final resolution of the instruction on step two to get the final resolution of the instruction on step three. So we consider that immediately. Step three is a uh, okay, first of all we put down the original equation x squared minus seven x. Remember there is over three here. Yes, we have over three. Yes, okay. Over three, all equals to five over three. Okay, so that's the original equation. The final resolution of the instruction on step two. The instruction on step three is such that we should find the half of the coefficient of x. Coefficient of x. Find the half of the coefficient of x, which is minus seven over three. Square it and add it to both sides. So that's what we're going to do right here. We start by x squared minus 7x over 3. This is x squared. Okay. Plus, then the half is 1 over 2 times minus 7 all over 3. At this point, squared. Okay. And then all equals to 5 all over 3. Once again, half times minus 7 all over 3, once again squared. So the second expression, the second step here shows that we have found the half of the coefficient of x, which is minus 7 over 3, squared it and added it to both sides. So for the simplification, we give us x squared minus 7x all over 3 plus 7 all over 6 all squared is equal to 5 all over 3 plus 49 all over 36 all over 36 of course it's 49 all over 36 the reason here is because uh, 1 if 1 multiply minus 7 squared will give you 49 and then 3 times uh, 2 2 times 3 here will give uh, 6 this is 3. Uh, 3. 2 times 3 will give 6, and 6 squared will give 36. Okay, so this is the final resolution of the instruction on step 3. The final resolution of the instruction on step 3. So we're going to build on this to get the final resolution of the instruction on step 4. The instruction on step 4 is. Uh, Factorize the left hand side and the simplify the right hand side. So we do that quickly. Factorize the left hand side. The original equation is x squared minus 7x all over 3 plus 7 all over 6 squared all equals to 5 all over 3 plus 49 all over 36. Factorizing the left hand side, we are going to factorize the left hand side, okay? And then simplify the right hand side. We yield x minus 7 all over 6 squared. Then here, the LCM of the two denominators, 3 and 36, is just 36, okay? The LCM of 3 and 36 is just 36. So if 3 divide the number 36, each of them will get um, 12. 12 times 5 will give you 60. Okay? 36 divided by 7 will get 1. 1 multiplied by 49 will still give us 49. Okay? So, we are going to write by x minus 7 all over 6 squared equal to 60 plus 49 will give us 109 all over 36. Once again, this is the final resolution of the instruction on step uh, 4. This is the final resolution of the instruction on step 4. We are going to build on this final resolution of the instruction on step 4 to get the final resolution of the instruction on step 5. So, we do that right away. The instruction on step 5 is such that we should find the square root. We should find the square root of both sides. Okay? So, step 5. Step 5. The original equation x minus 7 all over 6 
is equal to 149 over 36. Carrying out the instruction, carrying out the instruction of step 5, finding the square root of, of both sides we have um, square root of x minus 7 all over 6 squared, okay, is equal to square root goes with plus or minus root 109 all over 36, okay. So the presence of square here, we take care of the square root. So, Take care of this, and we are left with x minus 7 all over 6 is equal to plus upon minus. We can split this 109 all over root 36. For that simplification, we give minus 7 over 6 is equal to plus upon minus root 109 all over 6. Okay, of course, root 36 will give us 6. Root 1.9 will give us some kind of uh, decimal numbers, okay? So this is the final resolution of the point of the instruction on step what? 5. We are going to build on this to get the final resolution of the instruction on step 6. Okay, we look at that. Step 6. Step 6 is another point to consider. So we have uh, step 6 is make x the subject. Make x the subject, okay? Step 6. The original is x minus 7 all over 6 is equal to plus upon minus root 109 all over 6. So making x the subject, we give x minus 7 all over 6 plus 7 all over 6 equal to 7 all over 6 plus upon minus root 109 all over 6. The essence of doing this is for us to be able to remove a minus 7 from the left hand side and then introduce it to the right hand side. That is the essence of introducing plus 7 all over 6 so that each other will be nullified. Or they will nullify each other and 7 vanishes. 7 over 6 vanishes from the left hand side and then uh, we have it at the right hand side. So, final resolution here is just uh, x is equal to 7 all over 6 plus upon minus root 109 all over 6. Okay, once again, this is the final resolution of the instruction on step 6, but we can still simplify further. We can still work further on that. So final resolution on that will give us what we are going to see now. Step 6. Step 6 continues, okay? Okay, there is no need writing since we are still on it. So x becomes uh, so the the, the L7 six then seven plus upon minus root one o nine. Okay, finding the roots, the roots, the roots of the equation or the solutions to the equation, the solutions to the equation. So x will reduce to x one. That is first root. Okay, x one stands for first root of the equation, and then x2 stands for second root of the equation. So finally, we get x1, we give, we take 7, first of all, we go with plus, okay, plus root 1 over 9 all over 6. Then x2, being the second root, we go 7 this time around, we go with minus, okay, minus root 1 over 9 all over 6. So that is it. If, okay, if we find the square root of 1 over 9 and then add to 7 divided by 6, it will give us a particular a definite value, a certain value, okay? And then we have the value of x1, one of the roots. The same thing done here will give us a certain, a defined value, a certain value. That is the value of x2 root 2. That is how this can be resolved. You can see how this uh, simple quadratic equation can be re resolved. So that is it. Okay. Thank you for the time. We are going to continue with the next quadratic equation series 2 method of factorization. Okay. Let's close.